Hey everyone, I'm Kevin Griffin from Swift Kick, and this is your Swift Kick Quick Tip. Today, we're going to talk about cleaning up Azure storage using an Azure Logic app. So, if you're like me, you're an extremely lazy dev. You're probably taking advantage of some of the great stuff up in Microsoft Azure, and you probably don't clean up after yourself. So, let me lay out a scenario because this is something that we're dealing with right now. As you can see on my screen, I have Azure Storage Explorer, and I'm looking at one of my blobs that we have been running for a considerable amount of time. So you can see the dates. I have data in this particular blob that go back to 2018, and they're not small files, they're not big files, but the combination of files just adding up over time really take up a significant amount of space. So if I look at my folder statistics for this particular blob, you'll see, all right, they're adding up. And there's a couple thousand blobs in this particular um, uh, container. And they're adding up. So we're up to about 27 gigs worth of stuff. <laughs> It's not stuff I'm using. It's just there because we needed a place to put the data so it could go off to another process and it could run. And really, I don't want to retain this more than 14 days. I don't need this data for a long period of time. Now, if you're a develop developer like me, you could probably go off and build some sort of background process that goes through on some sort of reoccurrence and it cleans up all the different things. But working with the .NET or, or Node versions of the, the Blob SDK, it's a little cumbersome because you have to do a whole bunch of heavy lifting. You'll have to go and get all the blobs and delete them. And I want to show you a slightly better, easier, faster way to accomplish uh, this particular task. So I'm going to go into Azure Blob Storage, and sorry in advance, I'm going to blur out a bunch of stuff because this is a client app, so I don't want to show anything that might be too revealing. So tip number one, put all of your Logic Apps, when you're working with Azure Logic Apps, under their own resource group. It just makes things a little bit easier to find. So I'm going to create a new Logic App, and you can find it in the marketplace by just searching Logic App. We'll say create, uh, pick a subscription and give it a name. Uh, I'm going to name mine something. Um, pick a resource group. If you don't have one, create one. If you do, just go ahead and select an existing one. Make sure your logic apps are in a similar location. Um, or if you're connecting to other resources uh, like blob storage, make sure your location is in the same place as the storage that you're connecting to. If not, you might have to deal with some uh, egress um, issues. Not a particularly big deal, but just something to be aware of. Uh, say create, sit back and wait a couple minutes. When your logic app is cur created successfully, uh, you'll come to this designer screen. And the first question it's going to ask you is, uh, how is this logic app going to get triggered? If this is your first introduction into logic apps, I'm not going to go too in depth into it because I'm still kind of figuring this stuff out myself, but every logic app starts with a trigger. Something needs to happen to cause your logic app to have to, um, to work. Uh, it could be as something as simple as a webhook coming in, someone posting a new tweet, that's cool. Files getting added to OneDrive, Dropbox, Blob Storage, you name it. Um, there's all kinds of triggers. I'm going to use a recurrence, though. A recurrence just says this Logic app is going to run on a clock. And our particular clock, when it runs, will be once every week. Uh, specifically on, we'll say Sundays, and I don't care when on Sunday that it runs. The, the real goal is I just need this to run every Sunday, uh, no matter what. And then I'm going to say next step. So every Sunday, this job is going to run. The first thing we need to do is we need to go to our Azure Blob Storage, and we need to ask it to please give us 
all the blobs inside of that particular container. I'll set up Azure Blob Storage and you'll see there's a lot of actions that we can work with inside of an Azure Blob. Uh, for me, I want to get, I want to list all the blobs or basically get everything inside the blob collection. All right, so list blobs. We need to tell Logic Apps which folder we want to go connect to. Uh, you'll notice I'm already connected to a particular storage um, device. If this is your first time going through Logic Apps, you'll have to tell it which Azure Blob endpoint you want to connect to. That's a five second job, especially if you're working inside the same subscription. Um, and that connection, that connector will be maintained over the lifespan of all your different Logic Apps. So if you set it up once, you just reuse it over and over and over again. Uh, so Azure Logic Apps already knows about my particular blob connection. I'm going to tell it which folder I want to talk to. And this one is going to be uh, called exports. I'm going to skip paging marker at the time. So there's a limit to how many entries the list blobs will return. In my case, if I go over the limit, uh, we could set up paging, but I'm not going to in my case. Um, I just want to get a flat listing of all the files until it next steps. So now for every blob that we get, I actually want to do a check on it. I want to check the date, the last modified date to be uh, specific. I want to look at that date. And if that date is older than the past, we'll say 14 days, it needs to get deleted. But if it's newer or within the past 14 days, it can stay. We're going to leave it alone. Well, let's set up a control, um, uh, very specifically a condition. A condition is just a if then. If a condition is true, do something. If it's false, do something else. So we have to ask it, which value do we want to look at? Uh, in our case, we're going to look at the last modified date. And Logic Apps is really smart. It's going to tell you everything that it knows about the previous step, the previous thing that we're working on. So the last modified date of the particular blob that we're working with. And Azure Logic Apps just did something really smart for us. And it's going to tell us that it did something smart. It, it likes to gloat. Um, it noticed that I'm working with the last modified date of a collection, a list of blobs that are coming back. So it automatically sets up a for each loop for me. And it's going to iterate through every blob that gets returned from the list blobs collection. I got it, Azure. Now we're going to check to see if last modified date is less than some value. And here's where you can get very specific or you can get um, dynamic. I could just type in a value, type in a date, and it should work. But I want to set up an expression. And there's a lot of built-in math, um, different calculations, different functions in Logic Apps. If I scroll down, there is some date-time um, calculations I can do. I want to add days to today, you, everything's in UTC. So let's pick right now and let's subtract 14 days. So 14 days ago, at this very moment, that's the day that I want. And if last modified date is less than that date, it needs to get deleted. So I can come down here to true and in action, go back in the blob storage and tell it to delete the blob. Uh, it's going to ask me what blob I want to delete. Now remember, we're iterating through a for each loop, essentially. So let's tell it to locate the file we're currently working with. And everything should be done. We don't have to do anything with false. False is, well, if last modified is not less than the date 14 days ago, we just want to ignore it. Don't do anything. So 
So I think we're, we're good to go. Let's save our logic app. And remember before, we had 27 gigs of data in here, about 13,000 blobs. We're going to run this logic app and it will run through our entry for us. And through the magic of editing, I have fast forwarded to the end of the cycle. I actually ran it two or three times um, to get through all the, the different blobs that I had, but uh, we're successful. So when everything works successfully, let me show you what happens. You have a run history and the run history tells you whether or not you had a success, successful run or a failed run. It tells you how long it took and you can drill down into any run and see how each individual path um, worked out. So green check marks are good. If you got any reds, um, that's usually bad, but you can go through each individual um, little thing and see uh, what the result was. So yeah, there's a lot of falses, which means nothing happened. I didn't have any deletes, but let me see if I can go towards the end of this, uh, this list. Uh, all right, so here I have a true and the true deleted the blob. And you can dive down into the individual response codes as well. So if something fails and you're not quite sure why, you can see what input Logic Apps gave to whatever the job was, and then what was the response, and try to debug from there. So there you go. Oh, let me show you the final results. So here I have a um, new look at my storage explorer and before I had several thousand about 13,000 blobs and but most importantly I had two 27 gigs worth of data just sitting up there not doing anything and now I'm what right around three megs um, there's a considerable difference in size that I'm not taking up now it's all just it's gone I'm only stuck with the information that I really care about um, on a certain schedule. And now this blob um, cleanup job is going to run every single week. And I can keep track of it, see whether or not it properly r runs and executes. Uh, but now this is something I don't have to worry about. And I think most importantly, this is something I didn't have to write code for. Um, this video, right around 10, 15 minutes, it took me five minutes to actually do all the work. And if you're building these background services yourself, you're not looking at 10 minutes. You're looking more at an hour or two and then doing some testing and more developments. Um, so I highly recommend Logic Apps for your background services. Uh, I hope this episode has been helpful to you. If it has, please give us a subscribe. I hope this episode has been helpful to you. If it has, give us a subscribe and a like and share with your friends. We greatly appreciate it. I'll see you all next time. Take care.